वेलकम टू इपिजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर मृन्मय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कम्पेटिव इंडियन लैंगुएज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी अफ कलकट टूडे उल डिसकस एम्स अफ ट्रांसलेसन स्टाडिज दिस मड्यूल इज रिटन बै मुहम्मद हसानुजामान द टाइटल अफ दिस मड्यूल is as mentioned that aims of translation studies it tries to analyze the aims of the translation studies as an academic discipline but before analyzing the aims the module seeks to define what translation is as an academic subject it goes uh, to analyze the different types and also the history of translation as simply an academic activity and it also looks at how it became a discipline and how james holmes theory of translation has contributed uh, james holmes's uh, theory of translation has contributed to the development of the translation studies analyzing analyzing these crucial aspects of translation the module tries to reach at a coherent understanding of the aims of translation the aims of translation are manifold and play a crucial role in a linguistic and cultural developments now let us talk about the definition of translation because definition of translation also reflects the aim of translation and further the aims of translation studies the english word translation first coined in around um, 1340 originates from the latin translatio what the meaning of the word is transporting itself coming from the past participle form of the verb transfer or to carry over the process of translation between two different written languages incorporates the changing of an original written text the source text or in the original verbal language the source language into a written text or a, the text or target language in a different verbal language the target language or tl in the field of languages translation today has several meanings as jeremy mundy mentioned the first one can be said like this the general subject area or phenomena or i studied translation at university so this is one of the meaning of translation the product that is the text that has been translated they publish the arabic translation of the report so product is also translation we use in this sense also the process of producing the translation otherwise known as translating translation service it is difficult to define the exact definition of translation translation is obscure like poetry and over the years it has dynamic growth but simply to define it is both a change over and transmission of meaning from one medium of communication to another medium of form of communication the concept of translation has changed a lot over the years earlier it was about just the translating of one language into another but in today's concept translation covers the vast transaction of human communication of all forms cultures and thoughts in other words the concept of translation developed from purely linguistic approach of the 60s to textual focus of the 70s have now developed the translations of cultures and other human dynamism translation as dr johnson johnson defines engages with the process of change into another language retaining the sense which is indeed the basic objective the search for the right word is central to the process because the meaning of the original has to be retained in the target language as much as possible revising johnson's definition a h smith maintains that to translate is to change into another language 
retaining as much of the cells as one can. Uh, we discussed few definition of translation, which helps us to understand the aim of translation or aim of translation studies as an academic discipline. Now let us talk about types of translation, which also will help us to understand the aims of the discipline. This type of changing meaning from source to target medium of communication corresponds to interlingual translation and is one of the three categories of translation which has been demonstrated by the Russo-American structuralist Roman Jacobson in his seminal paper on linguistic aspects of translation. Jacobson categorizes are as follows. Interlingual tra intralingual translation or rewording and interpretation of verbal science by means of other signs of the same language. Interlingual translation or translation proper and interpretation of verbal science by means of some other language. Number three, intersemitic translation and transmutation and interpretation of verbal science by means of signs of non-verbal sign systems. These definitions of the types of translation are grounded on semiotics which means the general science of communication through science and science systems. Its use is important here because translation is not always restricted to verbal languages. Intersemiotic translation for example takes place when a written text is translated into different forms such as music, film or painting and sounds. Examples would be or the famous adaptation Shakespeare's Othello in Bollywood movie Omkara. Jeff Wenne's famous 1978 musical version of H.G. Wells' science fiction novel The War of the Worlds or 1898 which was then adapted for the stage in 2006 or Gurinder Chadha's 2004 Bollywood Pride and Prejudice adaptation of Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice. The second type that is the interlingual translation. This would take place when we produce a summary or otherwise rewrite a text in the same medium of communication. Say for example, a children's version of an encyclopedia or even rephrasing of a text. It also happens when we re-articulate an expression in the same language. The interlingual translation which occurs between two different verbal science systems has been the traditional focus of translation studies. However, the very idea of translation proper and of the stability of source and target has been contested. The question as to what we mean by translation and how it differs from adaptation, version, transcreation. Sandro Halverson, 1999, claims that translation can be better considered as a prototype classification. That is, that there are basic core features that we associate with a prototypical translation and other translational forms which lie on the margin. Um, now, let us talk about history of the translation. History of the translation always helps us the purpose for what translation has been had been done in different periods of the history, different periods of the time. The genesis of writings on the subject of translating goes far back in recorded history. In earlier times, the act of translation was the only way for the transmission of different cultural and religious texts and concepts. In the West, the different ways of practicing translation were talked about by, among others, Cicero and Horus dated 1st century BCE and St. Jerome comes around the 4th century CE. Their translated writings created a great impact and welded a lot of influence until the 20th century. In the case of St. Jerome, his approach to translating the Greek Septuagint Bible into Latin would affect later translations of the scriptures. Indeed, in Western Europe, 
the translation of the Bible was to be the battleground on conflicting ideologies for well over a thousand years and especially during the Reformation in the 16th century. In China, it was the translation of the Buddhist sutras that inaugurated a long debate on translation practice from the first century C. The practice of translation was considered to have secondary status. People regarded it only as a means of learning a new language or of reading a foreign language text if one did not have the linguistic ability to read the original. Study of a work in translation was generally thrown out once the student had learned the necessary skills to read the original. Grammar translation therefore fell into growing dis disrepute, particularly in many English language countries. But it is since only recently the value of translation has been restored as it arose to be translation studies and academic discipline. In due course of time, translation become, became a translation studies discipline. Throughout history, written and spoken translations have played a crucial role in interhuman communication, accessing to diverse texts for scholarship and religious purposes, trade and industry. But the study of translation as an academic discipline only really started in the second half of the 20th century. In the English-speaking world, this discipline is now generally known as translation studies, which is actually popularized by James S. Holmes, 1924 to 1986. In his key remarkable paper, delivered in 1972, Holmes describes the then emerging discipline as being concerned with the complex of problems clustered around the phenomena of translating and translations. By the year of 1995, the time of the second revised edition of her translation studies, an integrated approach, Mary Snell Hornby was able to talk in the preface of the, of the breathtaking development of translation studies as an independent discipline and the prolific international discussion on the subject. The translation studies has become more prominent through four very visible ways. First, as the demand for translation has grown up, a huge expansion in specialized translating and interpreting programs at both undergraduate and postgraduate level has also taken place. These programs draw thousands of students as they are mainly oriented towards training future professional commercial translators and interpreters and serve as highly valued entry-level qualification for the professional. Second, in the past decades, there has also been increasing number of conferences, books and journals on translation in many languages. Online accessibility is increasing the profile of certain publications. Third, the number of publications has gone up, so has the demand for general and analytical instrument such as anthologies, databases, encyclopedias, handbooks, and introductory text. Their number is always growing. In more recent years, translation studies scholars have banded together nationally and internationally in bodies. In an increasing number of countries, international conferences on a wide variety of themes are being organized. From being a relatively quite backwater in the early 1980s. Translation studies has now uh, become one of the most active and dynamic new areas of research compassing an exciting mix of approaches. Now let us talk about James Holmes' map of translation studies. James Holmes, an American poet and translator, coined the term translation studies for this new scientific approach. He believes that the main intention of translation studies is the development of a full and comprehensive translation theory. James Holmes in his famous book, The Name and Nature of Translation Studies, provides a theoretical system that both recognize the unify many aspects of translation studies. It 
predicts and an entire future discipline and effectively encourages work which aimed at establishing that discipline. Holmes developed the concept of pure and applied translation, pure translation studies. Pure translation studies is divided into descriptive translation studies and theoretical translation studies. The aim of descriptive translation studies is to describe the observable facts of translating and translation as they manifest themselves in the world of our experience, where for translating there is the uh, process that underlies the creation of the final product of translation. The objective of the theory of translation studies to establish general principles through which this phenomena can be explained and predicated. The theoretical translation studies often uses the empirical results produ produced by descriptive translation studies or DTS. It elaborates principles, theories and models to explain and predict what the process of translation is given certain conditions such as a particular pair of languages or a particular a pair of text. Theoretical translation studies uh, hold both a general translation theory and partial translation theories. Holmes established the final aim of the discipline as the elaboration of a general theory capable of explaining and predicting all phenomena regarding translating and translation. Now let us talk about Applied Translation Studies Applied Translation Studies, the second main branch of the discipline, is concerned with the following issues. First one is translator training. Second one is uh, the, the preparation of translation tools such as dictionaries, grammars, terms, banks, etc. And the third one is translation criticism, which concerns itself with the development of criteria for the evaluation of the quality or effectiveness of the translation product. The fourth one is the formation of translation policy, which deals with the role of the translator in a given socio-cultural context, deciding on the economic position of the translator or deciding on which text need to be translated or deciding on the role that translation should play in the teaching of foreign language. Now, let us talk about the particular aims of translation or particular aims of translation studies, what we get from the whole discussion. In recent years, the translation theory has created new dimensions of translation studies, though the act of translation was considered a peripheral academic practice in earlier times. It has gained vital importance in the current academic spaces as the world is becoming richer in diversity and open to universal knowledge production. As the diversity and complexity of the world is expanding, translation aims to expand our ability to explore uh, through literature or other source of knowledge the thoughts and feelings and information of people across the globe and from one society to another or another time. It permits us to enjoy the transformation of the foreign into the familiar and for a brief time to live outside our own skins, our own uh, preconception and misconceptions. It expands and depends our world, our consciousness in innumerable and indescribable ways. Thus, as it became a prominent, the translation studies has set its particular aims. The primary aim of translation studies is twofold. Firstly, in the process of translation, the meaningful effect of the original language or text is meaningfully carried forward in the target language or text. In other words, when translating from one medium of communication to another, the sense of the original source is reproduced in the target source. When a text is translated, the medium of the text is changed, but content which creates the value of the text is retained in the target text. The translator creates alternative mode of expression in order to add 
dynamism to the effect of the text which the text produces. Secondly, translation aims to expand the horizon of knowledge through multilingual fertilization. As knowledge is produced in different languages and in different point of time, the translation is the only method through which the transmission of knowledge takes place. For example, when a text is produced in some language and the reader from other stream of language cannot get access to the text, the translation is the only gateway to the accessibility. Translation promises a significant increase in readership and expands the number essentially, allowing, allowing more and more readers to be touched by the author's text. For writers whose first language is limited in terms of how many people speak it, translation is indispensable for achieving an audience of considerable size. It asserts the possibility of a coherent, unified experience of knowledge. In the world's multiplicity of languages and cultures and thus translation aims at the universalizing the horizon of knowledge. The act of translation also aims to be a creative art. Minakshi Mukherjee makes a right observation that the act of translation is voluntary. That is, the material has been chosen by the translator himself and the prime mover is a compelling desire to recreate. She also says that the translator is a writer in the language in which he is translating. That is, his handling of the language is not merely competent but creative. Moreover, it has rightly been observed that the best translation is one which does not read like translation at all. But it is creates excitement and joy of a voyage, voyage of discovery normally associated with an original work. As a critic deconstructs the text and uh, reconstructs it, so a translator decodes and source language text and records it in the target language. If criticism has become creative, for it not only interprets the text but extends the meaning of it, then translation is creative art as it recreates and source language text in a new way in the target language. Translation aims to be a linguistic bridge building factor. Jair Firth popularized translation as a kind of bridge building of languages. Translation without the medium of language is unthinkable. The literary translation faces problem as it uses different languages as its medium of expression. In non-literary translation, the medium is again language. Human beings communicate among themselves through language, but different people speak different languages in different parts of the world. Uh, that is why the translation is of vital importance for the purpose of communication among people of different races, cultures and faiths all over the world and thus translation bridges building among different languages of the world. The translation also contributes to the growth of language. Because when there is linguistic transportation and a recreation of words and meanings, translation helps to bring dynamism to this fluid movement of language. Translation brings new words and restructures meanings and tries to understand the text from different body of language. There are languages which are becoming because they are not being translated and kept updated in the process of exchanging and developing the glosses and the modern day adaptation. In the age of globalization and technology, the languages face challenges due to the growing phenomena of multilingualism and linguistic dynamism. However, translation aims to make language more dynamic in its constant growth and recreation as the cultural and social phenomena of the world are expanding. Cultural transmission is an important goal of translation studies. Since languages have difference in terms of form and structure, translation acts as a kind of bridge between different languages and cultures. It remarkably aims at 
bridging different and diverse cultures as different peoples from different parts of the world mingle and share their cultural uniqueness and this sharing and transmitting of cultures is only possible through the interlingual, interlingual and intersemitic translation. Translation brings one culture in contact with another culture and this helps in the growth of culture. The cultural transmission is also a modern phenomena by which people enrich their understanding of the world as translation studies at large aims at. The transmission of languages and cultures further leads to the phenomena of globalization, which translation also aims to create. The globalization in terms of communication, knowledge production, commercial trade and industry and entertainment has been possible through the act of translation. In today's world, the people of different cultural, linguistic, religious, racial and national identities have been able to come in one platform and transcend between transcend beyond nations and borders. It is translation which has created the global village where anyone can talk and share things with anyone from any corner of the world. In terms of knowledge production and consumption, translation has made it possible that language is no longer a barrier for sharing knowledge and universalizing it. The discipline of translation studies also aims at nation building. In the 21st century context of national development, translation is considered as a significant aspect and component of language learning. As the world is becoming globalized and internet is facilitating the communication system at great length, the importance of translation has widened beyond expectation. At the national level, translation helps in bringing out national integration and at the international level, it helps in improving good relations among neighboring countries and bilateral relationships. In a way, translation helps the people in their effort at nation building and establishing the national identity. One of the aims of translation is to bring different forms of representation. The people produce their cultural and linguistic works in their vernacular modes of expression and translate them into another mode of expression in order to register their voices or stories or life in wider public domain. Through translating their voices or narratives, they form their own representation. The marginalized sections of the people of a particular country translate their works from vernacular to the mainstream languages for broad appeal to their marginalized narratives. For example, Rigoberta Menchu from Guatemala uh, translates her literary work from Spanish to English for opening up her life struggle to the global audience. Similarly, C.K. Janu from India also translates her autobiography, Mother Forest, to narrate the plight of uh, the Adivasi community in Kerala. Thus, translation at large aims at creating different forms of representation. The translation also aims to be a work of collaborative authorship. It is a well-known fact that translation works as an independent medium of communication added to another medium of communication. It is therefore a resource to the world of communication without translation. One can easily imagine the process of learning sharing knowledge system would have been narrow and limited. Through and by translation or its methods of voice, voices, multilinguals, regions, subaltern languages can be heard. It is the editor or translator who creates another first world for the text to be read through translation. Translation has been a means of livelihood to many people who are involved in this profession. Translator is in an important position in defining the translated piece of work because the translation process does not merely carry the meaning of the author but it also carries the agenda of the translator in the sense that the translator translates the text through his understanding and interpretation of the terms and conditions and thus the, the translator functions as collaborative authorship. Uh, now, uh, let us summarize the discussion. In this discussion, we first tried to um, 
uh, define the translation so we took uh, quite popular definitions of translation and we discussed those um, definition of translation then we discussed um, the translation studies as a discipline and the um, types of translation categories of translation and the role of translation in the past in the history and the role of translation in present and contemporary world and <coughs> aim of the translation as a work as a mode of communication as a mode of uh, bridging the languages bridging the cultures and the role of translation in globalized world and from different perspective we tried to discuss what are the roles of translation aims of translation and through this study of aims of translation as a work we we, we try to understand the the um, aim of translation studies as an academic discipline. Thank you.